Hey guys, NJ here. So I am looking today at the JSOX clear uh, back plate for the Steam Deck. Now I've gone ahead and installed this. This is the stock one, obviously, um, which has been taken off. You can see here, and this is what we have now. Um, I know you would probably like to see me install this, but um, yeah, I, di I didn't film that. There's so many videos that have, have you know, certainly beaten me to the punch on uh, looking at this, um, looking at this back plate and um, how to install it, and you know it's super easy. If you're here looking at this, you've probably seen a few of those videos already. Um, but in terms of installation, you know once you've got the main back plate off, it's the same process to put this one on. The only difference being you've got these custom uh, back grip buttons to put on. Um, so those, if we just talk about those quickly. Um, they are, I think they're interesting. Um, I'm going to need a little time gaming with these to really know or, or to kind of draw a, a more conclusive opinion about them. Um, but what you have in there is you have a set that basically replicate the kind of stock feel of the original backplate, which are a fairly low profile like these that you can see. Um, so those are going to be like that. Um, and then you have these red and these blue ones. The red are kind of slightly higher, um, that give you a slightly more raised profile you can see here. And then these blue ones are really high. Um, and that, uh, and it's interesting that they're both hinged in different places. You can see that the kind of the hinge point is down here on these red ones, the sort of the middle raised ones, which is directly above where the button is pressed you can see the um the little cross hair style piece of protruding plastic there that will actually push on the bond uh, on the button that's on the the motherboard of the steam deck um so that gives you a different feel as well so you know pushing this way isn't going to do anything this is actually still going to need like a, a push down it just puts your finger in a slightly different position whereas this one is going to act more like a lever so your finger pushing here is going to actually push down so they, they kind of operate in different ways despite being different heights and you can see that um, on the with them installed because I decided to mix and match I, what I really wanted to do was have the lower and the uppers feel different so I thought let's let's mix it up and see what that's like but you can see installed um, if I press here that's you can hear that's not actually activating the button um, but it's just meant your fingers kind of in a different position. But you do need to press to get that to work. Whereas here, this one, you can kind of get it to activate anywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I think this one feels more like a, a flappy paddle. If you're into racing games, I think you're really going to like this. Um, whereas this feels, I don't know, I, I quite like this though. I like it a bit more than the, the stock feel. Um, one thing that is worth pointing out is they're progressively louder than stock as well. Um, this I can live with, um, these these red ones. If you listen here, that's about the same as the stock. Maybe a hair louder. But these ones, they're a lot louder. Now, if you game, you know, with your partner next to you in bed <laughs> while they're sleeping that might be a problem for you because if you listen to the rest of the Steam Deck kind of controls being operated here, I'll use the shoulders and the triggers and everything. And then I'll hit these blue tall ones. They're really quite loud, whereas the red lower ones, those are much more in, in line with the sound of the rest of the Steam Deck. And again, the blues. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess it's horses for courses, as we say. Um, you might like, I say, if you're a racer and you want that flappy paddle sound, and maybe, you you, you know, you like that sound along with the, uh, the feels, very tactile, very positive, I guess, then, you know, you might really like that. Um, for me, because I wanted to differentiate the two, what I, what I want to do, actually, is I think put these red ones up on the top, and then I want the stock ones down there. Now... The only problem with that is the stock ones, for some reason, don't come separated. That's interesting. They come as a uh, as a pair. Um, I don't know why that is. Why they didn't separate these as well. 
Uh, these are the only ones in the kit that are like this. The others are all separate mounts. And I can't see a reason for it, personally. So I think what I'm going to do is just score and snap these two apart so that I can mount them separately. I'm um, quite happy to do that and find out if that causes anything bad so that you don't have to. Um, um, but yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do because I want that height difference, but I don't really want these blue, uh, these super high ones. I would maybe live with it if it wasn't for the fact that they're so loud. That's just a bit too much for me. Um, that's enough about the buttons anyway. I think um, I'll do that in a second. We'll, we'll look at cutting this in and then trying that. Let's talk quickly about some of the other the other bits that I wanted to mention that I don't think have um, necessarily been picked up. In terms of the back plate itself, the molding is excellent. They've done a really good job here. Um, it fits perfectly. Um, considering they haven't got access to valves, CADs or, you know, blueprints, drawings, anything, they, they've had to reverse engineer that and get it so spot on and get the manufacturing toler tolerance uh to such high quality it really is a perfect fit um one thing i'll say is this aluminium back plate here you see i've I've actually got a little and we'll talk about this in a minute um the aluminium back plate has a thermal pad on the back of it if you choose to use that so that you increase the thermal mass um of that heat spreader shield on the back of the uh apu there um, that's connected to you know the VRMs and the um, charge controller and what have you. Um, if you choose to use that and you use that thermal pad, um, that does cause a very slight bulge there, um, just from needing the compression of the thermal pad. I mean, you can't really do much, too much about it because it hasn't got many anchor points. You've only got you know eight screws and they're quite far apart. If there was more screws in the deck this probably wouldn't happen but you can see there i mean i'm really nitpicking but you can see we've got fractions of a millimeter here but there is yeah can you see there is just a tiny gap now that will bother you or it won't for me and i'm fussy about this kind of stuff it's so tiny it doesn't really bother me at all it's, it's nothing where i'm gonna you know take this off and and give up on it just because of that, that that's really not an issue um and in terms of what this is doing, as I said, it's really just delaying the, you know, adding this thermal mass just delays the heat soaking, really. Um, it will eventually get up to the temperatures that it was before, maybe a couple of degrees less, but it's not, if you're not getting rid of the heat actively, if you're not using cooling of some kind to take this heat and, and remove it and move it somewhere, um, all you're really doing is delaying the heating up. In terms of how hot it gets, it gets to about 50 degrees, I think, at its hottest. Um, it probably won't do that for most gaming, but if you're, you know, pegging the GPU and the CPU, um, it could get that, that hot. That's uncomfortable. Will it burn you? Um, well, I mean, it's a, it's a hard one to answer. I mean, if you put that on your leg, you'd know about it and you go, oh, that's hot, and you'd lift it off and you wouldn't burn yourself. Um, but if you left it on your leg, <laughs> which you wouldn't, um, yes, you probably, you, you know, that would start to make your skin red. Um, so if you live in shorts and you like resting your deck on your leg and you've got, you know, your, uh, wrist, your nervous system's not very good at telling you when something's hot, then yeah, definitely don't do this. Um, but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I don't really see any harm in having this here. So I've stuck this um, little magnetic thing on here that came with a semiconductor that I bought. One of these little guys. Um, you know, and this is... They work. They, this actually works really well, this one. I'll link it in the description. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a, a heatsink cooler. You know, it turns on. The fan spins round. It's got a little thermal conductive bit here. Uh, you need to peel that back, but that will magnetically go on here, like so. Um, and that's a nice size for the Steam Deck as well. Um, but that does get really cold. Um, it, you know, works exactly as you think it would. Um, and that does cool this plate down a decent amount. I wouldn't do this on the go. I wouldn't do, you know, this is kind of, I think this is completely unnecessary for, you know, handheld gaming and using it out and about and or even on the couch. If I left this docked for a long period and I was gaming on my TV with an Xbox controller or something, 
absolutely no harm in doing that just to keep things a little bit cooler but this is not going to cool oh, let's pull that off so yeah that's like fridge cold really very good little device for what it does um, but that is not going to make a huge difference to the temperature and what's going on under the uh, directly on top of the apu um, by the time it's got through all of that through the the plate that's holding it down past the copper heat pipe which is moving heat far more efficiently over to the, the fin stack here for this fan um, by the time it's got through that then through the thermal pad then into this aluminium block and then getting cooled by you know this guy it's we're probably talking a few degrees maybe three four degrees i would say three three to four degrees absolute tops um in terms of what it's doing but it, you know it all helps um but is it necessary no we'll we'll do some testing anyway um but uh this is not like a, a long-term plan for how you would gain this um while you're out and about it's just silly plus the fact you've got to power these things uh, and you don't really want to run this and power it off the main battery you just drain your battery faster and it's you know you're not gaining anything by doing that really the far better option is to use the if you saw my last video was to use this stuff um, which was the uh, thermal right tfx this stuff was fantastic this gave gave us pretty much seven to eight degree temperature drop um, just through being so fantastically conductive this is it's hard to apply it's very thick um, but this is great stuff go and check out my video on that it was the last, last one i did before this um, this was a much better idea um, but on the whole um, this is a nice case it's it's an aesthetic thing isn't it it just looks cool um, i love the fact that they give you a, a bunch of grip buttons to play with um, it's very well you know it's very precisely manufactured um, it fits perfectly. There's no rough edges. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a nice little mod. Um, I don't see any harm in this. If you are worried about that and you want this to be at a lower temperature, just take the thermal pad off on the underside of it. Remove that contact between the spreader shield and this aluminium plate, and that will change things hugely. And then if it's still bothering you, if that's still getting a little warm, put a, a plastic sticker over it, something here, and you're basically turning it back into what it was before. Um, so it's it's not a deal breaker. Um, I, I see no harm in that at all. I think that's that's fine to have that there. And, and yeah, you know, del delaying the temperature rising with more thermal mass. No problem with that. Um, I, I've, I've got no problem with that at all. Um, like the grip buttons. Uh, and the other thing I should mention is they have brass inserts here um, that these um, screw into, which is great because brass insert, inserts won't wear out um the way the if that was just molded plastic they can get chewed up if you like to replace these or swap them around a lot so that was a smart move um so yeah all in all it gets a thumbs up from me i like this uh i like this back plate um so yeah let's uh let's have a look at a few little temperatures and let's also uh let's splice this in half and see if i can um rearrange these okay so um that seems to have worked fine i just uh scored that edge with a knife on both sides um and then uh just went in a little deeper with a bit more pressure on one part and then literally those just snapped apart um so i've been able to install them separately like the other ones and uh yeah no problem at all they work absolutely fine so I don't know why JSOX didn't um, do that from the start. Maybe it was just um, cost more money to, or it was a cost cutting measure perhaps. I, I'm just not entirely sure. Um, but that has allowed me to do what I wanted to do, which was to have um, just some uh, difference between the lower and upper set. Um, so I've got the kind of the middle ones on the upper set, which is a bit more like my flappy paddles. And then the lower ones are uh, flush. So that's the combination I think I'm going to go with. I quite like that. Um, I'm going to do some gaming with it. Um, let's have a look and see um, how the thermals are with this thing now. Um, of course, this has had already had the thermal right TFX applied to it. So we'll do some. Um, we'll repeat the test from the last time. Um, I the last video I did, uh, but we'll now do it with the obviously with this on and see if it's um, dropped any more or if it's slower to ramp up. Um, let's give that a go. I've got DCS fired up back in the mission I was in before um, and originally uh, in that video 
we were sitting at around 78 degrees on the GPU and 80 on the CPU. Um, so we are lower. Uh, I'm going to keep flying here. You see we are pegging the GPU. I've got everything cranked. Same settings I had when I was thermal testing before. Let's drop this down a little bit. Um, and it does appear as though things are slightly better by a few degrees. So this is without the cooler on the back. This is just the uh, the stock plate. DCS really is such a beautiful looking game. Um, but yeah, obviously I've cranked everything up um, as I did in my last test when I first installed the thermal right TFX. Um, this is an exact replica of that test flying over the same part of the city. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we're doesn't look like we're going anywhere. So we are 74 on the GPU, 75. Let's keep going. See if uh, see how see how hot we can get this plate. Now if I just rest this for a second, leave this going. Let's feel that back plate. Okay, so I've got my hands fingers on that back plate. It is warm. Uh, is it burning me? Nope. It's fine. I'm not worried by that at all. I've still got my fingers on it. This isn't going to burn me at all. Um, at the minute, it doesn't look like it's going to rise much more than that, but I'll just keep going, see where we get to. So 75, let's say 75 on the GPU, 77 on the CPU. Uh, and that is from 80 on the CPU and 78 on the GPU. So as as I uh, thought, we um, actually that's better than I thought. Um, just for having that back plate there, um, that has brought it down three degrees from where we were without that aluminium block on the back of the JSOX case. So that is promising here we are over the Karen International Las Vegas um, yeah it doesn't seem to be changing I think we're we're probably soaked at this point um, so yeah it's definitely a little bit cooler so that's that's good that's a win just with a case on its own um, the question is now if we add this um, cooler on the back what kind of difference will we see from this guy so let's do that okay so we've got our cooler on there let's see how much of a difference we get now so let's unpause let's continue to fly and see what happens here well, so maybe that's dropping already mm, okay that's <laughs> quite interesting stuff this now if I take the sound out of the equation here you can hear that uh, obviously we've got fan noise from that little cooler even though it's um not hugely high rpm so you do get a little bit of noise like i said i probably would only do this if i was docking this to the tv um all right let's uh continue to fly let's head back into a bit more of the city So this is higher graphics than I would normally run on the Steam Deck. I'm literally doing this just so I can peg the GPU. Um, let's keep working our way around here. So I'm not being super scientific here, but um, it will certainly give us an idea. So, yeah, I mean, we've dropped again. We're now down to 70 degrees on the GPU. So with the cooler, again, with without with the stock back plate and the thermal right TFX, I'll put all these up on the screen, but um, we were at 78 on the GPU, 80 on the CPU. 
And now with the um, paddy cooler on the back, we now have 70, it looks like we're, we're pretty much around 70 degrees on the GPU, so we've come down a decent amount actually. That's, that's another eight degrees down um, from there. Um, so yeah, they're all sort of incremental steps really. But it's definitely doing something. Definitely doing something. Let's get the expanded view up here as well. Yeah, I think we're not getting any colder than that now. So it seems to be 70 degrees for the GPU. That seems to be about where we are. So let's um, let's take this cooler off again. Oh, it's a strong magnet. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that guy works pretty well. That's about 30 bucks, this one. Uh, and it is this, just says magnetic cooler. I'll find a link for this one. Um, but yeah, the quality is decent. Quite, uh, quite impressed with that, actually. That's good if you cut your cut or burn yourself as well. If you burn your skin, <laughs> you can put that on there. It gets really cold. Um, right, so let's uh, carry on with this and see what that goes back up to now that we've taken the cooler off, see where it settles again. I'm expecting this to, to rise again. Oh, interesting, we almost dipped into the high 60s there. So this should be getting warm again. But because we've cooled that plate again, it's this thing of thermal mass. We've added um, quite a bit of thermal mass to that back shield, so it's just going to take longer to warm back up again. Um, but it will warm up again. We'll see where it resettles. Yeah, I can feel the plate getting hot again now. It is taking a while. I mean, to have the GPU absolutely pegged like that um, and be in the 70s, low 70s, um, I'm just really happy with that, as is. Uh, and you know even if it comes up a bit to the mid 70s or even the, the low 80s that's great where you don't want things really is in the 90s mid 90s if, if you're up there um, first and foremost I definitely recommend that thermal right TFX repacing that was the uh, best bang for buck performance boost sorry I say performance boost thermal performance let's get that clear better for the longevity of everything you know fractionally better for your battery life if your fan's not working as hard but it's just better for the longevity of your components if things are running cooler um, so yeah we're slowly starting to creep up 72 73 so we're heading back to where we were before the uh, the cooler was added but you know is that worth spending another 25 bucks on just to drop it that little bit more mm, I don't think it is personally I think the uh, just having the plate doing its job uh, is absolutely fine. On the whole, I'm pretty impressed with what this case is doing uh, and the thermals I've ended up with, uh, but it really seems like adding that cooler probably maybe four degrees tops, four or five degrees if we left it for longer. Um, if that matters to you, you can get one, you can do that, um, but really I think um, this JSOX case with the um, thermal right TFX and you've got a deck that's going to be very happy even under max load. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. So there's some interesting stuff there. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got comments, I'm sure you have, please drop them in and we'll, uh, we'll chat. Um, I shall see you again in the next one. Thanks guys.